In this video, we cover some of the basic conditional statements in Python, which are if, elif, and else. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if you don't know, if, elif, else statements are considered conditional statements because if certain conditions are reached, um, then a block of code will be executed based off of those conditions. So basically, like if such and such is true, then write this code. If such and such is false, then write this code. If such and such equals this exact thing, then run this code and so on. So it lets you basically control how people or how things flow through your, your code based off of conditions. And we're going to go through some examples here so it'll make sense to you in just a minute if it's not making sense right now. So let's say that we are doing something with like stock prices and that's what we want to do is if elif else statements for stock prices. So we'll just say stock price equals 230. So that's just our stock price. We're setting it in there uh, just for example. And then we can do our first if statement. So to write an if statement in Python, you just type if and then you write out your statement, what you want to see if it's true or false. So there's several different ways you can check true or false statements. We're going to be using simple operators in this video, but you can do more complicated things like with the in statement, which also provides a true or false answer and other functions and methods that produce a Boolean, uh, which is a true or false statement. But we're doing simple, simple operators here. So if stock price is greater than 50, and then we enter a colon here, uh, you might have seen some of my other videos with for loops. So same type of concept, use the colon to basically uh, go to the next line. And then the indention shows what's to be executed for that particular if, if statement. So if stock price is greater than 50, then do what is equal to don't buy. So we don't want to buy the stock if it's above $50. All right. Now, if I wanted my if statement to do more stuff, I would just keep it the same indention going on and I could type more code in here that would be executed if the if statement rang true. But I'm not gonna do that. I just wanna say, however long you keep it indented for is how much code will run for your if, if statement. All right, but we're gonna back out and we're gonna go to L if, which stands for else if. So if, if, if it's not if, then maybe it's L if else if. All right, so if stock oops, stock price is less than 50 and stock price is greater than 20 colon do what? Buy. So notice I added another operator in here, the and operator. So now we're checking two things at the same time. Stock price is less than 50 and stock price is greater than 20. So we're covering that range there. We want to issue a buy. And then let's say to end our if, elif, else block, we can go ahead and execute an else statement. So basically, if these two things aren't true, then what, the, what are we going to do? And we'll say do what equals to buy everything. All right, cool. Let's go out and print do what. All right, so our stock price is 30. Let's see what happens when we run it. It says buy. And that makes some sense, right? Because our price is between 50 and 20. So uh, we came up true with the buy uh, test here. And so buy is what we're supposed to do. If we set it to 70 and ran it, it'd say don't buy because again, we're greater than 50, which means we don't buy. And then if we set it to, let's say 10, run it, and then it's buy everything. So we wanna buy everything because the stock price is below our threshold and so buy everything we can. So now I'm gonna show you that we can kind of clean up this statement right here because it seems kind of redundant, right? because we were using stock price twice and we were doing like a range of number. So we could probably clean this up. So we could do like 20. So LF and then stock price is greater than, stock price is greater than 20, right? 
but then less than 50. So we can run it like this, and we have the same answer, but just cleaner code, right? So that makes things nice and clean. And let's say that if the price is $80 exactly, then that's like a secret code, and we want it to say something for that secret code. All right, so let's just say, L if stock price is equal to 50 or 80. And you'll notice that I use a double equal sign to show equals to as opposed to a single equal sign which assigns a variable. So this is a, an expression to compare things, whereas this assigns uh, a variable. So LF stock price is e equal to 80 do what equals to secret code. All right, let's run that real quick. Seems to work. Let's throw in 80 for our stock price and it says don't buy. So we were thinking that, hey, if my stock price is equal to 80, then it should tell me the secret code, right? But it doesn't because how this works is it goes from the top down. So as soon as it finds a true statement, it does that true statement and basically jumps out of the rest of this, the elif and else's. So as soon as something's true, it's like, okay, this is true, done. And then it just jumps on down to the, the print line, to the next line of your code. So if we wanna do something special like this, we'd actually wanna put this at the top of our block of code. And we wanna start it with an if, change this to an L, if. And now if we run it, we see that our secret code is true and we print out secret code. Of course, if I did you know, 81, it, it doesn't ring true our secret code, but it comes down here to stock price is greater than 50, says don't buy, and we get that result like that. All right, so I kind of went over the and statement and I'll do it again in just a minute just to clarify anything, uh, but there's also an or statement. So let's say right here in our secret code block. We also want to have a secret code if the stock price is 999. Like that's actually let's go with 777 because that's like a lucky number, right? So we can do an or stock price <clears throat> equals to uh, 777, then do the secret code. So we could do, you know, 80 shows the secret code or also 777 also shows us the secret code. And to illustrate the and statement again, let me do something real quick. Day equals to Friday. All right, so we'll do the day of the week. So we could do an and day equals to fry and run that real quick and we see that our secret code is displayed. Whereas if I change the day code to Tuesday, we see it does not display it because the and statement did not execute. We went to don't buy. But if I set this to Friday and I set it to 80, we see the secret code runs. And that's because the and statement just puts these two pieces of code together. The stock price equals 777 and the day equals Friday or basically the stock price is 80 and it doesn't matter what day it is. It could be Tuesday, it could be Wednesday, doesn't matter. This secret code is going to go because the price is 80. Uh, if we want it to check if it's $80 or 7 7 and Friday, we can wrap this in parentheses. And now if we run it, we check to see if the code is or the price is 80 or 7 7 and the day is Friday, which it's Wednesday here. So this rings false, and we jump down to this LF statement where it's don't buy. But if I switched it to Friday, of course, we go ahead and get our secret code. So hopefully you can see with your or statements, your ands, your parentheses, you can get really creative with your conditional statements. And so that's pretty much it for this video. As you can tell, you can get pretty fancy with these conditional statements, and I just wanted to show you the basics to get you started. If you enjoyed this video, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.